All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of great millstone that rule well. Peace, salutations, and many blessings to the elect Akiyam across the four corners of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas Camp, and the first thing I want to say is do not take your foot off the gas. I'm going to say it again. Do not take your foot off the gas. All right. And as the brother Arianaz and myself, we was um, talking a little bit earlier, and that was the key topic to what we were pretty much going into conversing about through the spirit. But when, um, when it said, don't take your foot off the gas, it's meaning as you're on your, your, your way, going through the straight gate, as we know the kingdom is going to be set up very soon, Yahweh Shah is getting ready to come back with his holy host. We know all the things that are going on around the planet Earth, the war over there in Syria, the battles, all the people dying. Over here on this side, you got the men of the Lord prophesying, and you got brothers elevating through the spirit. With that being the case, the higher you elevate into the spirit, you know these demons are going to come and distract you. And it ain't that they're distracting you because they oppose you, they just doing their job. All right. The reason why they're attacking so hard is because there's something that's going to lie on the other side. What I mean, all the things that we're fighting for, what is fighting for the kingdom, all of this, we see something levitating in front of us. Right there in front of us, we see it. We see the prize right there on the other side, right across the water. We see it. We can get to it. We have access to it. Keep your foot on the gas. As soon as you take your foot off the gas, that's losing of the faith. When I say keep your foot on the gas, I mean press toward the mark. Keep on rolling, rolling on the way to the prize. And we have the faith to make us continue to walk on that path. All right. We know a lot of marvelous things are going to be within the near future. We believe that through the spirit. All right. It's right in front of us, floating in front of us. We have access to it. It exists. We got to continue to push. All right. The more that you doubt, the harder it is. It's going to be free to get to that price. Okay. And that's Satan's job. His job is to put doubt in your mind. For you to actually see the prize ahead of you but those thoughts are fluctuating your, in your mind as if it's some type of mirage or so when it's not a mirage it's actually there but those thoughts will tell you that it's a mirage meaning you'll have doubt in your head oh, i don't think i'll be able to do this i believe i can but i, I don't know that's that wavering and that's the last thing that i i wanted us to do he didn't want us to waver it's either you believe or you don't believe it's either you have faith or you don't Right now we're living in the time where faith should be flourishing. Faith should be continually to go when it's all time high. You should see faith, faith put, you, you're, we're, being, we're seeing faith pushed more and more and more. Brothers are going into it heavy, all right? I wanna actually read this scripture and it's going into the apostle Peter who was chosen by the heavenly father to lead the church, who was called by Yahweh to lead the 12 with the 11 because he's one of the 12 all right and also too peter who is also a mortal man just like us this is matthew chapter 14 verse 22 and it says and straight away yahweh shot constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he set the multitudes away and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahweh went unto them, walking on the sea. Now what you have account of is the twelve on a ship, going to um, pretty much um, sailing across the sea, trying to meet Yahweh over there. Okay? And as they was in the midst of the sea, they seen... Yahweh walking on the water. Now, when you, you got to really think to yourself, it ain't, it wasn't just no, it wasn't just no normal sea. I mean, it was a normal sea. Let me rephrase that. But it was storm going on. It was, it was, it was, it was um, storms. It was wind blowing. And with that being the case, the sea is going to be extremely uneasy. All right. So you can really imagine when you put yourself in the mindset of that, that boat and how it was getting tossed to and fro by the waves. Okay. 
It was getting tossed to and fro by the waves. When you put yourself in the account of that, it was a lot of wind, a lot of stuff going on in the sea right at that time. All right? To the point where it's like, oh, shit. You know? And in the midst of that, you've seen Yahweh Shai walking. Okay? Now I'm going to continue. It says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahweh Shai went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. So they thought it was an apparition that was out there. They thought it was a ghost. You know? They was nervous. You already in the in the midst of a sea, tossing back and forth. And then in the midst of that of the, the stormy rain, the lightning, the thunder, all the waves, you see a ghost walking on the sea. You know? And it said they had had fear. In their minds, they thought it was a ghost. All right? But when you go to verse 27, it says, But straightway Yahweh Shai spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Okay? And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. So it was on the spirit for out of all of them for Peter to actually stand up there. Now, I'm going to pause really quick. Put yourself in the mindset of somebody. When you think of the account, remember when Yahweh Shai was on a boat with him previously. When they were shipping off the sea, Yahweh Shah was in the bottom deck sleep. And it was a storm and it was a tempest. And they were scared and they thought that the boat was going to be tossed over. You know, and they got nervous. We need to go get Yahweh Shah for help. You know, or was we going to die? They went downstairs and they got Yahweh Shah and he cursed them out like, man, you really think, you really think I'm going to let this boat be flipped over while I'm on the boat with you? All right. Put yourself in the account of with your, your vessel being the boat. The spirit of Yahweh Shai dwelling within you. You're knowing that you ain't going to be tossed over if you got the Lord with you. Now with keeping that in the back of your mind, jump back to the scenario. Think about it as Peter thinking back to that previous account of all them being on the boat and Yahweh Shai being with them. Now look at Yahweh Shai on the sea, walking on the water during the storm. He's not on the boat with you, but he's out there in the water. And he's like, you know what? I believe I can get on the water too. I believe I can walk on the water too. If it be your will, Lord, can I walk on the water? Let me walk on there with you. That's what Peter was saying. All right. So verse 29 says, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Yahweh All right. So by Peter's faith, he was walking on the water to go to Yahweh Yahweh was in front of him. Peter was on the water walking to Yahweh Shai, right? As he was on his way walking to him, defying the odds of that is rain, storms, tempest. And best believe they weren't no little lightweight waves. It was enough for to have them shook. Okay? I'm going to continue. Verse 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. Now. As he was on his way walking to Yahweh Shai, he put his foot off the gas. Those distractions got in the way. Satan got in his mind. You can't do it. Listen, listen to the waves. Listen to the thunder. You really think you can walk towards him? Look at the waves. It's not even steady water. The boisterous winds made him sink. Took his foot off the gas at that time. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring up that account is going into as we're sojourning here in this truth as we're wandering and we know that Yahweh Shai dwells within us he's there we see him there we see the kingdom right ahead of us walk towards it without wavering we know all the gifts that was given to the elect to do Yahweh Shai said you shall do greater things than I all of that calls on faith when Elijah called the rain down during the drought he did that off of faith when Moses has split the Red Sea, he did that off of faith. All right. When Yahweh Shai did all of his miracles, he did that off of faith. All right. Peter seen Yahweh Shai walking on the water and asked to, to come out there. And Yahweh Shai said, come. When you think of Peter being the head of the church, we know within the reincarnation that's David. And with us being of the house of David, 
The same thing that applies with them, we got to apply this to ourselves. Yeah, how Shah wants us to come. Don't let doubt hold you back. Don't let the boisterous winds and the waves hold you back. All right? We're in a time now where we need to walk by faith continually. Don't worry about Satan. Satan doing his job. That's the last thing we need to worry about. And the harder this thing gets, the more you fast, the heavier you get in the spirit, it's going to be more boisterous winds to come. But we have access to walk on the water. All right. And when I say that, I'm using that as an analogy of defying the odds. Define the odds that was expected for. Define the odds that we've placed in our own minds. Those barricades and barriers that we put over our, our own minds, it's time to jump over that and to go straight out faith and to know that we have it. Yahweh Shai has it and he gave that to us. Okay? Don't doubt, just walk. When you go to verse 31, it says, And immediately Yahweh Shai stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou little of faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And he asked the question. Peter was doing it. Peter was walking on the water. Soon as he had seen the distraction, he began to sink. There's distractions everywhere. But as is written in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to get it. Let thine eyelids look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. You know, think of this in the count of uh, Yahweh Shai when Peter was walking on the water. You know, Yahweh Shai was doing it. He gave him access to do it. Look forward. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. If you go to the straight path of what you're supposed to do and don't waver and don't doubt, you're going to defy the odds. You're going to defy the expectations that this world had put us on. And you're going to go into the expectations of what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah put us on. And the only way to reach to those expectations that was given to us is faith. Okay? There's one more scripture I want to go into. And I'm going to end it off on that. Let me see if I can find it. Alright, this is Mark 11 and 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea and shall not shall not doubt in his heart see that's the key point there he's saying if you say to the mountain be removed not symbolically we know that means that you can do anything you put your mind to if you believe in your house shall mashiach okay using the example of moving a mountain faith of a mustard seed but the key point it says and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So you can have whatever is said if you believe and don't doubt. All right. Peter wanted to walk on the water. Yahweh shot. He asked if he permitted it. He said, come on, Peter. Peter believed when he was on the water. As soon as the wind hit, he doubted. And that's when he fell. In our own carnal minds... It might seem simple to say you believe something or do it, but them demons are strong. And they're going to have that thought in your mind say, uh, you can't really do it. That's something that got to be rebuked. And with mastering that, it takes prayer. And most importantly, it takes fasting to be able to do those things, to be able to combat those demons through the spirit. All right. And we have access to that by faith. But importantly, going back to Mark 11 and 23, the key point was not doubting in your mind. You have believed and there's no level. I mean, you know, in a sense, there's level. There's levels of the faith. But faith and faith, faith is faith. Believing is believing. And you either believe or you don't believe. All right. You either believe or you don't believe. Don't put your foot off the gas. OK. Allow patience to work its perfect worth. Work and walk in faith. Right, and yeah, yeah, I was size dead. He said, Do it, you know. It ain't like we got to wait on the time to feel like we got to do miracles, of course, it's through the spirit whenever it makes sense. But Yahweh had gave us this, He gave us an auction, He gave us the anointing to all the sincere brothers. You got a lot of guys out there that's full of shit, okay. But to all you sincere Akion, don't doubt, 
Don't put your foot off the gas. Because when you think you got it, that's when you'll start to put the foot off the gas. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep walking. Keep believing. Don't let the boisterous winds fool you into thinking that you're going to sink. Because your is here. All right? Think about 2nd Ezra, the 14th chapter. Where it says, pretty much loosely paraphrasing, Ye shall dwell with my son, and be as those that have, have a like mind, unto the times of the end. And right now we're in the time of the end, so we have the son of the Most High, who is Yahabashah Mashiach, with us. And when we're all grouped together, that gathering, can't nothing defy that, man. We shall break the yokes, burst the yokes, and break the bonds, pursuing the Jeremiah 5 and 5. So I'm going to end it off on that, Lord willing, it was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakwadash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace, salutations, and many blessings to you, elect Akiam, across the four corners of this round earth, kicking this word of sincerity and the truth. Shalom.